Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this ocean wave. We're going to be doing it step by step from start to finish tonight. And I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in chat during our live show. So if you have questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. It's a Belgian linen canvas from Fredericks. Um, it's the linen canvas board, so it's thin and it's got a hard core in it, so uh, it doesn't warp. I really like these a lot. Uh, I have not done anything to prep it. I've just kind of sketched on it lightly, but they come pre-gessoed, so you don't have to do any prep preparation on it. Um, but you can use really whatever size canvas you've got. It doesn't have to be this size. I thought it would actually look kind of cool on like a elongated canvas too. Um, all right, let's go over our brushes really quick. I've got just a few brushes. These are Princeton brushes. Uh, they are our brush sponsored. So thank you to them. Frederick's our canvas sponsor. Thank you to both of them for providing our materials tonight. Don't get paid by them. Just like their products and use them. So um, okay, so I've got a number 12 bright, a number eight, eight, six, and four of the Filbert in their Summit series, the long handled green ones. They're clicking, making lots of noise there. Um, and then I've got, also got the two aught round in the Summit. And then I've got, let's see, some of the brown handles here, the Umbria line. They, I have the, four angle, which is a three eighths inch angle, number four round and number two round. And then in the red handles, which is velvet touch, I've got a couple of script liners, got two aught and two script liner, and then a quarter inch angle and the little blenders, the quarter inch and three eighths inch blender. And then I've got their select, I've pretty much got all of them <laughs> except for the Aspen out tonight, um, the five eighths inch Deerfoot stippler. So um, may not use all these brushes. I just grabbed whatever I thought. I haven't painted this yet. So you guys are going to get to see me paint it and figure it out as I go along. Um, it's what the fun of live shows. <laughs> I never know how it's going to go. <laughs> um, all right, let's go over colors really quick. <laughs> We'll just fingers crossed everything's gonna go fine. <laughs> burnt sienna, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, quinacridone burnt orange, uh, cadmium orange, Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow light, uh, phthalo green yellow shade, cobalt teal. This is light phthalo blue. Uh, it's a mixed color. It's just phthalo blue plus white, but it'll give us a head start. Um, this is. Co uh, thalo turquoise, thalo blue green shade, and ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, and quinacridone magenta. Uh, basically, you've got lots of blues and turquoise colors in here. If you don't have all these colors, basically you can mix all three of these colors with these two, with a green and a thalo blue. And if you don't have the green, you could probably make something similar with the yellow and thalo blue. So um, you don't have to have all the same colors as I'm using. Just kind of use whatever you've got that's similar. This is unbleached titanium, which is just kind of a... a Titan Buff, it's called in golden uh, or other lines of paint. Titanium white, I've got some fluid titanium white. You can see it's kind of puddled up there to kind of thin out my white. And then this is uh, zinc white and glazing medium. So that's all we're going to be using tonight. Oh, and also you might want a toothbrush for some splattering. So, all right. Um, any questions before I start? Did you say the S word? Yes, yes. Splatter. That's splatter. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes. Sorry, no questions. Okay, very good. Well, welcome. If you're new, we uh, we do these live shows usually twice a week. Right now, we're going to be doing them once a week for the summer. Yes. Just new schedule, no Saturday shows through the summer. But uh, anyhow, hope you come back and subscribe and leave us a comment. Let us know if you're new. We always like to hear. That's right. And join the Facebook group. Like yeah, join the yeah, exactly. If you paint along with us, definitely share on the Facebook group. That's the best place to do it. All right. So uh, where to start here? Let me go ahead and show you what I did uh, with the drawing. I'll go ahead and just use a um, brush to do it this time. I'm going to use this light phthalo blue, maybe a little bit of the other phthalo blue to 
darken it up and some glaze. I sprayed about, oh, about 10 minutes before the show, I sprayed my canvas with a little bit of water too. So it's got a little bit of a, it kind of soaks into the fibers and, and allows the paint to go on a little bit more smoothly. So to just do kind of like the sketching, I'm just going to keep it fairly light. And um, what I did was figure out kind of where I wanted this wave. Obviously, it's going to be our focal point. You could make it farther back. I pushed it a little bit to the center. I cropped off the side of it to fit on my canvas because obviously our picture is a lot wider than our canvas is. So if you want to, you can make this closer to the third. It's kind of almost on the third, but not quite. So it's a little bit in from the third. So I might move it back to here a little bit, actually. We'll see. So there, you're going to make a little C for the, or backwards C, really. It's kind of like, it's like a question mark. Um, half circle. Right about... This end starts on the third and it goes to about the center right here and it falls right along the center line here on the bottom. So the top part is going to come almost up to the third on this way, this way. So it's not that wide though, it's a little bit shorter. So it's gonna fit right in there somewhere. And then this line's gonna go down to the third. So this top wave and this line down here are gonna both be kind of right on our thirds or right below the third here. So we're gonna do kind of a line diagonal. I'm too close in, honey. I can't see what I'm doing. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so there's our third markers. So up in here is gonna be the top of our wave and it is gonna be all up in here. It's gonna come pretty close. I'm, I actually made it a little bit um, more rounded than it is in our photograph. In our photograph, it kind of goes almost straight across and just barely down, but I wanted to exaggerate that curve just a little bit more. So we're gonna bring it up a little bit and then back down, and it's just gonna kind of do this little zigzaggy thing. And then right about at that crest of the wave, it's gonna come down like that, okay? Then our horizon line is actually crooked because I guess the person taking the photograph is in the water. So, you know, their camera's probably tilting. They're getting pushed around by the wave. If you want to, you can straighten up that horizon line if it is bothering you. I kind of was on the fence about it. Mark said I should leave it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it as crooked. It kind of adds to the feel of the of the out of control wave here. Yeah. So we're going to come up just a little bit from where this kind of wave ended just a little bit and that'll be kind of our beach right there and it's going to come down at just a little bit wider angle than we just drew so it's going to be like right there and then there's some trees up in here tree 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 it's pretty low right here there'll be our sun right in here and then more trees more trees more trees and then it kind of flattens out and comes out like that and meets up with our wave right there. All right. And then the rest of the wave um, is just mainly going to be kind of uh, hitting some um, just kind of the right um, perspective. So we're going to start uh, in our farthest point here. We're going to start small and we're going to widen out these these um, areas of the wave. So we're gonna have these areas in here that are gonna widen out right in through here. So this one's gonna come up this way and this whole middle section is going to be a color. And then it kind of comes back down together back in here and another color kind of gets introduced, pushed down from this wave. So we've got kind of a pie shape here and then we've got another one that's gonna come down kind of in here and zigzag back up this way and then kind of continue actually down this direction and then we've got all of this this action in here in our sunset area this is all going to be pretty much white there's a little wave right here and then there's kind of some crisscrossing foam that's going to be all through in here but again um, if you kind of 
Remember, these ones are going to get a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner and, and closer together as they get farther away. So we can do a few lines in here that are kind of smaller, closer together. And then as they get back here, they're going to get a little bit wider and that will help uh, with that perspective for us. All right, and then it's gonna come up this way. I'm gonna add some foam to this water too because there's not a whole lot of foam. There were some other photos that I saw that I almost bought instead of this one that had a little bit more foam. So I think I'm just gonna add some foam to this wave once we're in this area over here that we've got all dark, all right? And then um, we've got a major kind of area right here, a little color that's coming down and zigzagging up here and again getting a little bit bigger as we come up to so down here it's kind of thin I kind of made it wider than it needs to be right there um, it's gonna be quite about thinner quite a bit thinner right here and then as it comes up it gets gets wider and wider and then up here towards the top it's gonna be quite quite a lot bigger and it's gonna curve out this way a little bit and then there's another one that kind of mimics the shape of the wave there. Okay, so those are our main um, points. There's also one other um, one that kind of comes from the bottom here and it zigzags up here and it, it trails down this way, but it also continues up this way and cuts this wave into a pie this way as well. In fact, it, yeah, it's kind of somewhere in there. So like that. I hope it's cherry. Huh? I said I hope it's, it's cherry. cherry. <laughs> I I knew you were going to ask a pie. I had pie feeling the other day. I still haven't made a pie for Mark. Um, He's yeah. Like, he was like false uh, advertising. All the cruel <laughs> cruelty to animals, I think. <laughs> uh, so normally when I'm painting, I'm just going to just keep on moving. I'm just going to ignore it. La la la, did you say something? Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you want to be on camera? Is that <laughs> I'll zoom in real tight for you. No, no, normally when I'm painting uh, in nature generally, I you're going to have to zoom out. Huh? Definitely. I mean it. Um, thanks. Um, normally I need to, I, I will like dull the colors a little bit and this wave it's pretty bright like most all these colors are really vivid so i'm not going to do much of that on this i'm going to really try to keep these colors really vibrant so um you can decide if you want to dull your colors a little bit all you need to do is add a little bit of brown or like a yellow oxide which i don't have out today but um something like that will help dull the colors but um I'm just going to kind of leave them. And I, instead of like painting this whole sky blue, like I normally might do, um, since there's so much white in here, I think I'm just going to do right up at the top here and just put my most intense color up in here and try to kind of just tap. I'm using the corner of my large brush here and I'll get some good little fuzzy action up there and maybe do some into the wave right there and then I'm going to pull it down do this in small sections so if you're doing a really large canvas go ahead and do do the whole do do the whole <laughs> the whole sky when I say that um I'm gonna wipe my brush off now off camera there I just wiped it on a paper towel and grab my paint now I've got my white here and I'm just going to come in with my straight white and come below where I want it to blend. So I'm going to come below this color down into here. Try to fill this in kind of quickly. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to tickle in my throat all day. It's driving me crazy. And then while this is still wet, I need to blend up into this. So I'm just putting down my white there and blending back up into that blue. My brush will pick up color and I can wipe it off on my paper towel and keep blending. So I'll put enough paint down on your first layer so that you have time to do this and it doesn't dry out real quickly. And you can, um, you can spritz it with a little tiny bit of water if you need to while it's still wet, but um, this is working pretty good for me. So 
have to do that. So that's all I'm going to do there. I'm going to come all the way down to my horizon line with my, and I had a little bit of that fluid white in there. That's helping me kind of keep that paint a little bit wet, a little bit longer too. I want my brightest area to be like right in here. So I'm going to really go in with my white right there. And then wipe my brush off. And you want to blend with kind of almost a dry brush because it, it picks up, it sops up the paint and it pushes it around. And that way you'll get kind of a softer blend. If you have too much paint, it just, it just smushes the paint into each other and it doesn't actually blend it like that. So that will actually turn out really good. I'm glad. Okay. We're on a good, we're, we're doing good so far. <laughs> sometimes those, sometimes those blends don't go, don't go with the way I planned. So uh, that worked out good. Sometimes they're a little pickier than that. All right, so I'm going to get some of the turquoise, a little bit of the cobalt teal. Um, if you don't have this turquoise, thalo turquoise, um, you can use thalo blue and thalo green in um, pretty much equal parts, and you'll get a color similar similar to this, almost exactly this. Um, and then if you add white to it, you'll get kind of a cobalt teal color. So um, I'm just basically using the cobalt teal and maybe a little bit of this thalo blue uh, light to dull that color just a little bit. So I've got that color. I'm going to smush that off my brush and grab some of the phthalo blue and some white and mix up some bright blue with that. And of course I got that turquoise in there so it's affecting it a little bit but that will be good. Let me get a little bit more of that. No, I don't want to. So let's use the white. Thalo blue is a really high tinting strength. It's one of the one of the colors that's got the highest tinting strength that you'll use. So you use like one tiny little part of thalo blue to like four parts white to get this color. It's super concentrated. Um, all right, so let's use these two colors. I'm just going to start kind of blocking in this wave in here. It's a little bit too bright, I can tell already. So I'm going to get a little bit lighter color. And it's okay if it's a little bit bright. We're going to go ahead and put other colors in here too. I'm going to, I'm going to get some more white here though. So try to get a little, little bit lighter. And I'm just using these colors because I already have them kind of out on my palette. Normally I would work on that background first, but I'm going to go ahead and do this and then I'll put in my background while this is drying because I'm going to need several coats on these waves. So, so just kind of help us give us a head start on this wave. In here, we got some greens. So I'm going to get some of that cobalt teal and some green. And do this area in here that we've kind of mapped out. That's like right from here down and back up this way. And I'm just using this big brush. I probably need to switch to a smaller brush here. I'm going to do that because this one is a little bit big, although it is making blending a little bit easier. The bigger the brush, the better as far as like when you're choosing your brushes, choose a brush that's the largest brush that you can handle in the area that you're painting. It'll make the process go a lot smoother and faster if you do that. All right, so that is good there. Trying to get most of that color out of there. I'm making a mess. Okay, well, I'm just going to have to leave it with paint in it because I can't get it clean right now. It's so far away, I can't get a good angle on it to really like clean. All right, so I think I'm going to go with this one. This one's the six filbert. It's a little bit smaller. It will give me a little bit more maneuverability here. And let's go ahead and go ahead and do the sky here. I need to wait for that white to dry, but I think it's dry. So let's go ahead and use, I'm gonna use this brush. This is a quarter inch blender. Get a little bit of water with it in my magenta and my burnt orange. And then 
probably a little bit of purple over on the very end. So we're going to go from magenta, uh, purple in here to the yellow right here. So yellow is going to be right here. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to tap that in this dark purple color. And then I got a little bit thick there, but it's all right. Okay. I want to wipe my brush off, get the lighter color, the next lighter color. Put that in. The bottom is pretty straight, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of scratch that bottom flat. And then I've got this color on this side too. But I'm going to wait and do that later because I want to make sure that I get this on blended as I go. I'm going to get some orange and mix that in. Ooh, what a pretty color that is, isn't it? I've got cadmium orange here. You could use cadmium red light too if you have that. That would work. Okay, more of the orange and some yellow, Indian yellow now. And if you've got a lot of that magenta still in your brush, you're going to have to... And I've got my fingers sitting here so that I know where I need to have my yellow. Uh, so I know I need to be going yellow by now. So I'm going to wipe all of that out and get my yellow. It came mostly out, so I'm going to go ahead and put my yellow in and work in the opposite direction here. Tap in some yellow and just tap back into this color and just, this color is still wet a little bit, so it's going to smooth those together, smush them together a little bit and blend them. And if they don't, you can blend it on your palette but it worked okay for me. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of that orangey color and use it over here. And then, so this horizon line is going to be kind of tilted like this. It does a little bow up a little bit right here. So this area may be a little bit different, but I'm going to go ahead and get this Pinacridone magenta and put it in here. There's a tree right here. I like that. So I've got an acridone burnt orange here. And mix some yellow into that. Put some of that in here. And I've got some of my blue color showing, so I'm just going to tap it in right there. Okay. All right. Get some of that yellow. Maybe get some Indian yellow. Really, the Indian yellow is probably not totally necessary because you're not using that much of it. So if you don't have it, don't run out and buy it. If you have it, use it, but it's not, it's not going to be used that much. So really only going to be in here. And then this color in my beach and get some of the unbleached titanium and use that for my beach color this yellow wipe my brush clean get some more get some of the pinker color the beach is going to change colors just like the sunset so as it goes out here it's getting more pink purple color and it actually kind of turns blue by the time it gets over here. Get some the purple and ultramarine blue. Oh, right in there. And it really kind of changes color so much that you can't really tell what is water and what is beach. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do this kind of gray-blue color that I just mixed up in here. 
And can I just tint a little bit of that beach with it? And let's go ahead and use it over here. Get some of that magenta. Mix it with that blue. That's the ultramarine blue and purple mixed with the magenta. I had some of the yellow still in my brush. That's not on clean. I'm going to do like this. I see some kind of some lines in here. Maybe get some of the quinacridone burnt orange. And then right in here, I'm going to get some white. Some of the unbleached titanium. Some of this lighter color right in here. Honestly, this is probably going to be the hardest part of the whole thing. Like, and it's not that hard. So I, I really don't think this one is going to be all that difficult. Hopefully. I'm going to try to keep it beginner friendly. I always do, but you never know. <laughs> well, at least on the beginner ones, I always do. Some of them, there's no help for it. They're going to be hard, no matter what you do. Okay, so pretty happy with that. I'll probably need to add some highlights to that beach um, but I need to let dry first, so we got some good color on there. Got that good kind of rainbow going on in our tree, coming out to the sides. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this. I've already made a total wreck of this. Let's flip it over. Got a clean spot to work with. Spray my paint one more time. All right, let's go ahead and start to work from the outside in here. I'm going to get the ultramarine blue. And I'm seeing some nice dark ultramarine blue back in here, really full strength. And we'll just go ahead and pull it. It's a, it's a transparent color, so you can see it's leaving kind of streaks. So we're just going to kind of try to get it on there as best we can. And just go in the direction of our, our streaks so that if they do show up, which they are going to, you can see how much is streaking here. Uh, I can add a little bit of glazing medium. If you don't want it to streak, what you can do is add just a little bit of uh, titanium white. Titanium white will make any color more opaque and make them cover, cover better. But I really don't want to cut the intensity of the color too much. So I'm going to pretty much just go with it and I'll add more layers as I need to. See how it's going over the top of this. So you can see the difference between this color and this one. This one's got the little bit of white in it and it's not as bright. I'm going to get some Thala blue, ultramarine blue, and purple, doxazine purple. Ooh, look how pretty that color is. Super intense. Use that in here and I'm going to blend it in right here and do like a little arrow pointing towards the what oh I see okay thank you okay then I'm going to get some turquoise Blend in some of that turquoise. Turquoise is also transparent color. Really, almost all these colors that we're using today are going to be transparent. The only ones are not are like the cadmium yellow, the, the, the burnt umber, and burnt sienna. All these other colors are, or this one's not, these two are not. But all the other ones, anything that's got white in it, so the, the cobalt teal and the, that have white in them. But all of these thalos and ultramarine and Doxazine purple, quinacridones, those are all transparent, which will give us that kind of glassy look in the sea. Be really pretty. It also makes it a little bit tricky to get to get a solid color that is vibrant. So we're just gonna have to 
kind of take our time and probably put in several layers to get that color that we want. Okay, and then where these two meet up, I'm going to grab some of that cobalt teal color here and just while that's wet, blend them together a little bit. And it's okay if it doesn't look good. We'll, we'll fix it. This is just our under layer. It's not going to look good. That's one thing that um, you know, I would encourage you to just repeat to yourself while you're painting this. Any painting really with acrylics is that, you know, if it doesn't look good, just and we're just in the ugly stages, so we're going to keep on working through it, and it'll get better. If you know that going in, that it's probably going to look like crap for a little while, then um, somehow it kind of gives you permission to just put the paint on there and not worry about what it looks like right at first. Are you using... Stress over it so much. This is a quinacridone magenta mixed in here, but that ultramarine blue was dry, so... Wait for it to dry. What were you gonna say? Sorry about that. Uh, are you using any glazing medium? Uh, not really. Not no, not really. Because I don't want it to go thin. I want it to stay pretty vibrant. So that's what I'm gonna call myself from now on. Glazing medium? No, I'm vibrant. Vibrant? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not fat. I'm vibrant. I don't want to lose my vibrancy. Right, exactly. Don't thin it out because you don't want to lose your vibrancy. Check. I like that. I'll call that my excuse too. We'll go with it. Wow, what a vibrant couple they are. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we can use that when we talk to other people. <laughs> you look vibrant today. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. So getting some of this ultramarine blue mixing in with the thalo blue that we had over here. And I'm just going to add it up here. Look at how pretty that is. I got this a little bit dark right in here. So I'm just going to put down some of this color. And then I can glaze back over it with the ultramarine blue when I need to. Getting the little blue. I'm just going to kind of get the lighter colors here on my brush and all in here. There's these ripples and things that are in this lighter tone. There, that translucent color as the light comes through the wave of the water, um, it turns it green. So all of this here is the, where the light is shining through, thinning, that water is thinning out, and this pretty blue is coming through. Okay, and then up in here, it's kind of a mixture of white and this color. So I'm going to go ahead and put this color underneath, and I'm going to be putting a lot of white on top of it. In the ultramarine blue with a little bit of glaze and put it over the top of this so you use that light and color that color is a little bit too wet still so i'm gonna let it dry a little bit but you see how we'll be able to glaze that blue over the top of this so i'm going a little bit lighter in here even though this color is going to be fairly dark when we get it done i want i want uh, some translucency right now 
or some light color underneath so that I can, I'm going to do the same thing right here. Add a little bit of the lighter color right in there, just so that I'll have some to play against later. I'm going to put a little bit of the white right there. And we've brought that sand down into the water a little bit there, that sand color. So and we'll have a little bit of that right on that edge. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that white and some of the unbleached titanium. Maybe a little bit of that gold color. I'm going to use that right in here. I've got these blues on my brush, so they're kind of mingling. I'm going to get some of the quinacridone magenta and use that in here. Look at how pretty that is. A little bit of pink. Tinting. Okay, and most of this is going to be white in here, but I'm just, we need this color kind of un underneath in between these little pockets of waves that we're going to be having in here. I'm going to get some of the ultramarine blue, mix that in with this. And just going to transition between these two colors here. Okay. And let's bring some of this blue down. If your paint's starting to get sticky or, or not not flowing for you, so I you know tried to blend that out and it just didn't um, didn't blend with what was in my brush. You need to pick up a little bit of water, and when I'm picking up the water, I'm just dipping the very tip of it in the water, and then bringing it over here and kind of mixing it in, pressing my brush down pretty hard to get those that paint saturated through the middle of the brush and then I can come in here and you can see how much easier it'll go on once I've got a little bit of fluid in my brush. If I didn't know to do that a lot of times what beginners if I hear you know get comments from beginners um, that will or you know people who are learn, trying to learn to paint um, saying that you know I'm using a way a lot more paint than you do um, and usually that's the problem. They're not using enough water, usually. So the, the paint will start to get sticky and lose some of its, in your, uh, lose some of its flow as your brush dries out. It needs to, because the only moist thing is going to be your paint. So it's just going to suck up all, all the moisture out of your paint every time you get more paint. And um, it's not going to lay down on the canvas smoothly for you. Okay, so I'm just going to use this light blue here and kind of start putting in some of my foam. This brush is a little bit big for this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail yet, but how you doing, hon? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. I had dinner already, so I'm a happy man. <laughs> yeah. Full belly. I'm a little more alert, too. I need a nap, though. That's true. <laughs> And there's some wave right in here that's cresting right there. We'll put some white in there. But I like it so far. All right, so this is that darkened area in the wave. It goes along here too. There's all these little splotches in here.
What you thinking of? Trying to see if it's truly a sea creature there or not. Where? Right here. Oh. Yeah. Just on the, on the smaller picture, it looks like the face of something, and you like the body going right like in here. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's just a reflection of the land. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Or the person in the water but taking the photo. We're having fun making it up. Oh. <laughs> Is it Ariel? It's Ariel. I think it's Ariel. Okay. All right. I think that's good. Let's. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some white now. I've still got this blue in my brush, so it's going to kind of tint what's happening here. I'm going to go ahead and start laying in some of this. That's an undercoat color. And make sure that your sky is dark enough. If it's not dark enough, go ahead and add a second coat to it right now. There are some clouds down in here in our photo, but I'm not going to bother with those. It's not really adding anything, I don't think, to the story. As long as we have this light enough here, we're all right. So now basically I'm just trying to get paint on my canvas. That's all I'm worried about here. Let's just get the whole canvas covered with my first layer of paint. I'm going in here on my white areas, places that I'm seeing a lot of white, and putting some of this in. Let me get some of that cobalt teal. Add it down here. So we have somebody who's curious. Mm -hmm. Do we have any plans to be doing bingo again anytime soon? I don't know. I, I do want to do it. I just, it was a lot of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a lot more work, like mailing prizes than I had anticipated. So it wasn't much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun playing. It was fun playing. It was not fun actually organizing sending. and shipping and all that stuff. Yeah, that was a real pain. It took me a couple of weeks and a lot of time. So I do want to do it. I just think maybe if we do it again, we'll just have sponsors for the prizes. Sponsors and gift cards? Yeah, sponsors and gift cards. And that's it. Keep it simple. Know. Yes, exactly. So. But yes, I do. I do want to do some. I just, I needed a break. <laughs> it was a very traumatic experience for Angela, <laughs> having to ship packages. It's awful. It had nothing to do with painting, so. No. It was really yucky. I hated it. <laughs> she pouted in the corner. I did. <laughs> I did cuss at the computer a couple times, and I don't cuss very often. But the... 
It is amazing our two different personalities. There's things that you just get so frustrated and hate doing, and I'm sitting there going, that would be fun, (laughs) and vice versa. Yeah, I've got a friend coming over that she loves bookkeeping. Like she, that's her favorite. You know, she's like a, um, see, not she. She went to college for accounting, but she never got her degree. So she, but she loves bookkeeping and stuff, and. And I was like, oh, please, oh, please come and help me. <laughs> please, please. So she's going to come help me with my books. It's like any of that. I used to like it, but anymore, I just, I don't, I like, I don't have time. I don't have patience for it. I want to, I want to paint. <laughs> <laughs> can have, it's much more fun. We'll handle the Excel over here and yeah. do the painting over there. Exactly. Somebody said they, they can uh, see a butterfly blotch in your in your favorite owl there that you're dubbing your... Oh, it does look like a butterfly. Speaking of butterflies, <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been making stickers. I have no idea what I'm going to do with the stickers, but I have like stickers <laughs> I've been making out of my butterfly paintings. So uh, these two are holographic. Uh, I don't know. I don't have them for sale or anything, but I thought I'd show you. I've been having fun. I have one more coming. Teasers. Teasers. Um, maybe. Uh, and I made these two. This is what I've been doing with my free time. <laughs> Making stickers. Oh, my gosh. I have nothing to use them on. But uh, maybe someday we'll have a sticker of the month club or something. I can't resist a sticker sale. It's Sticker Mule's fault. They had a really good sticker sale the last week. So. <laughs> and the sad thing is our poor mailman has been bringing a package of stickers every day for like a week. It's like seriously, because they were ordered in separate orders because they had a sticker of a you know sticker sale every day last week. And I've ordered almost every single day. So I've had like three sticker every Every day this week. Poor guy. It's probably not the best thing to be ordering in a pandemic, but definitely non-essential. So sorry to my UPS guy. <laughs> it's keeping me sane. That's that is that essential? Probably. Oh. <laughs> it's keeping keeping me happy. Diverted. All right, so using the white, it's got obviously a little bit of blue in it here. I'm just gonna use it and fill in the rest of this. Not fully white all the way. Um, get some ultramarine blue. And just kind of scroll in some. It's very light, very muted, doled out. Not solid ultramarine, obviously. Just adding some of that. Let's get some of this sky color. Add it up in here. And more white here. I'm just using the corner of this brush really just to kind of tap off the edge and kind of make it a little bit soft. Okay, that looks good. I think we've got a good, we kind of came down a little bit lower here than I had intended to, but I think that looks good. I'm going to bring this out just a little bit right there. We've got the fairly light enough, I think, right in here. Go ahead and use the light phthalo with it too. So just getting the cobalt teal light phthalo. This is the original colors that I was using there. It kind of came in a little too far right there. That's going to have to be pushed back with a little bit of white right there.
go ahead and do a second coat on here now. Let me get some of that ultramarine blue with some glaze. And I'm just going to brush these two together. This is dry under here, so now I can get this, see how much more vibrant it is. Which mean blue glaze. This I'm kind of a little bit wet underneath here, so I may have to let it dry a little bit more, but it's doing all right. Which mean blue. Just trying to kind of get a good transition between this light area and this really dark area in this sentence here. I've got this arrow pointing right towards the surf there in this dark color. I think this is one of the more important features to get right because this will really push that perspective for us. And it goes about halfway, half the distance between here and here. So about halfway up. And like right in there, it's picking up because that paint, paint underneath was not fully dry. So just need to let that set for a minute and dry before I try to do any more. Okay, let's get some more of this ultramarine blue and glaze. I probably have a little bit of the phthalo blue on here too. That's fine. And I'm gonna go in here. I got a question. Mm -hmm. So earlier you mentioned that uh, you should use the largest brush that you think you can handle in a space. Right. But how do you know generally what brush type to be using for different effects and, and things that you're doing? So if you want texture, you're going to use a brush with a little bit more of uh, texture itself. So a little bit thicker bristles, um, one of these brushes, you know, if you want smooth you're going to want to pick a brush that's got nice smooth and um, soft filaments um, so it kind of depends on sort of what you're going for if you want to blend nicely like smoothly you need a brush like this that i'm using that has um soft but firm enough bristles that uh, you don't want something so soft that they're going to flop around like a like a watercolor brush would um, you need something with a synthetic is always best with acrylic. So Taclon is a fiber. I'm not sure what these are made out of. I think it's a special, it's not Taclon. It's, I think it's a special one that they developed with somebody. Um, uh, Princeton developed. I think they said it was Germany. Uh, if I'm wrong, sorry, Princeton, but um, I believe that's what she said. So, these ones are kind of a unique filament to Princeton brushes, but commonly you'll find like Taclon, which this is very similar to Taclon. Um, getting some of this turquoise here. Um, so yeah, but uh, but yeah, that's the main thing. You know, it's just kind of what are you using it for? If you're painting an animal or something like that, then you'll want to have something that, uh, like if you need to do fur, you might want to brush with uh, like a rake brush or something like that, that will allow you to do kind of broken lines, rake or comb, or I think they're called uh, grainier in uh, prints and brushes. So uh, let me see here. Okay. I don't know if that answered the question right, but please try to. Okay. Do you think some 
go with that. I don't want to get too fussy with this because it's got a lot going on in it. Just trying to kind of get the main areas mapped out here. Just using the edge of my brush to do thin lines here. I'm going to switch to this brush. This is the Deerfoot Stippler. And I'm going to get some of this Cobalt Teal Blaze. And I'm going to... I kind of debated using a brush or using this, but I feel like this whole area has got kind of that stippled texture. So I think that this brush will probably do the best job of getting that kind of wave look that I'm going for in here. But this area gets smaller as it goes down. And it thickens up here at the top. Get some of the light thalo. Put that in. I still have this cobalt teal in my brush, so it's kind of affecting the color a little bit. Okay, let's get some phthalo blue. Find a clean spot over here. And I'm gonna, I'm not really tapping now, I'm just gonna kind of push the paint around a little bit. A few areas I'm gonna tap where I know I want good texture. And then in here, it's kind of more smooths out when it starts to meet up with this wave here. If you're ever wanting to blend in an area, the thing to do is pick a color that is, is a marriage between the two colors that you're trying to blend. So pick a color. This color is the cobalt teal. This color is the the ultramarine blue so phthalo blue will be kind of in between and then if I have a little bit of that cobalt teal in here it'll lighten the color a little bit and give me a color that's gonna work well with that ultramarine blue And the paint's starting to get a little sticky, so I need to just be careful and stop trying to push it around when it starts to get sticky. Let's just work somewhere else. There's plenty to do. Okay, I'm going to start with the angle brush now. This will allow me to do lines and thicker areas. So, been going about an hour. That's not too bad. We made pretty good progress. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clean off my palette here. So I've got a fresh area to work with.
Come on. Oh my gosh. This thing is getting so stuck with paint. It won't. <laughs> Be careful. I know. I don't trust myself with razor blades. They're not kind to me. So uh, what color are your nails? I see that you're just kind of like um, holding them up there for everybody to see. I don't know. The, I have the color over. It's a new <sighs> color. You're going to have to look it up. I don't know. You, I mean, you just put it on there. How do you not know? I know my uh, toe color. Yes. Okay, throw your foot up there. Put it up. <laughs> no, <I'm> not <laughs> no don't, don't worry about it. Uh, I just... <laughs> A new, new paint color, so you just wanted to show off all your. Oh no! It, <sighs> it is two baroque pearls, and baroque is the like the music baroque, B A R O Q U E. Two baroque pearls. This is my toe color. No, I'm not excited. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little suggestive. You know, show, show us your tips. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> but it's a real pretty purpley blue. So I bought, I I went to buy it and I ended up with five new colors. <laughs> That's how I am. <laughs> I'm as bad with nail colors as I am with paints, <laughs> pretty much. So. Don't need any more, but I keep buying them. All right. So we've got a pretty decent groundwork here. So let's go ahead and we're going to work on it with our um, angle brush now. We'll give us a little bit more control over what we're doing. And I'm going to go ahead and put out the thalo blue and ultramarine blue with a fluid acrylics. This will give me, um, I don't have my, I have Quinacridone Machinta, but I don't have it out. So I'm going to have to make do with those two, I think. But I'm seeing a lot of lines, all these li zigzag lines through this paint, this uh, painting with these blues. So I'm going to use those to do it. All right, so let's start up here. I'm just going to use the tip of this brush. I'm going to draw. I'm going to put it on fairly thickly. I'm going to draw over the top of this, add little dabs. And it's exactly lines through. It's just if you go in thick enough, you can get a really solid white line. So that's why I didn't do white underneath. I'm doing this now and doing all these little zigzag lines, squigglies. Really not zigzag, there's more like squiggles. Just dabbing. And if I want to like a circle, maybe along the edge here, I can dab just the tip down, straight down. Draw some lines there. Isn't that pretty? It's really fun. Really fun. Just don't get too caught up in exactly, you know, matching the lines just perfectly. Just kind of get it close to your your own kind of version of it. It'll it'll come out different than mine. If I did this painting three different times, it would come out three different ways. So this is one of those paintings you just have to kind of go with the flow and let it happen which is my favorite kind really, because it's like a re releasing not to have to really stress over every little brush stroke. So just kind of take your time and let it, let it come out, brush how it wants to. Okay, so right about in here, right where that wave is coming over, got this white coming down. 
here and I need to make sure that I'm keeping it. I'm going to get a little bit of that cobalt tail. I'm going to need to make sure that I'm keeping it right enough that I can see it against that blue sky. So it's pretty light in that area. I may have to darken up that blue sky right there in this little nook right there. I don't want to have to do that, but I might have to. Let me get some of this color over here with the turquoise or the glaze. I mean, I'm just going to go across right here. Try to glaze in that sky right there. A little bit bluer. wipe my brush clean and just use clean water right here to push that paint back so I keep it up in that upper area where I want it just right in there wipe my brush off there we go okay so it's a little bit it's a subtle difference but I think it'll it'll help okay so now I'm going to come back through here that white now I can see it against that blue sky and I'm gonna get this small little bitty brush here with some white the blender and eighth inch blender quarter inch quarter inch blender put it in here like that a little splashy splash right there. Okay, then I'm going to use it and just drag it through. This paint needs to be wet to dry. I mean, dry through here before I do this. So I'm going to drag it through here and add some highlights to this right there. I could use this instead of this brush um, on for what I'm doing now too. If I wanted to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my toothbrush. Get some of this white. Make sure it's fluid so if you you should be able to kind of almost see through when you scratch through. It should be thin enough that you can see the palette through it. I'm going to put some of this splatter in this spray area right along the top of the wave, just in that area right there. Okay, and then so from that wave up, there's like a little zigzaggy line comes up and then back down a little bit and then it comes back up and then it turns into blue so I'm gonna continue that later but that'll be kind of our reference and it goes right here it splits it comes up right here and turns into a large white area that Zigzags all through here. Okay, get some more white. Really bright. Going right along here. I do the edge of this wave here that comes up. Back up, back. And then just kind of pull it out into this area, kind of in an irregular. And I'm doing it in this diagonal this way. So that way. I'll we'll find some of these dark areas and come up like right up next to them. It'll emphasize them a little bit. So these areas where we've already put in our 
darker colors, we can come right up next to them and make them more prominent. Okay. Get some more white, bright, bright white. Right here. Just using the tip, holding it very far back. That way I'm not getting like really solid lights um, or really like careful lines. And this way it'll keep it kind of more random. Just holding it very far, far back and just basically scribbling the tip of the brush. So give it really good random lines. And then I can use, get all that out of there. I can use this brush to tap in some texture with this too. I'm kind of setting it down and pulling to get some lines. Okay, good. It's Tip of that a little bit. Okay. on this wave in here. So there's another line. I like that. Oops, that's my phone. Duly yeah. noted. What? Duly noted. <laughs> oh, here, I was going to show you a picture of my carrots. <laughs> that's so random. There we go. <laughs> we had the weirdest happenings in our carrot patch this year just i don't even want to know they were having fun and <laughs> <laughs> they weren't having a party i swear we were only putting water on them <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so funny and puts those up it's like what the heck <laughs> And like most of them looked like that. it wasn't just like one or two. It was like all of them. They were all, we crowded them. We did, we put them too close together. We didn't, I didn't have the heart to thin them out. Well, then it just made all of the carrots stunted instead of like. Exactly. <laughs> having four or five carrots out of <laughs> dozens and dozens. Pretty good. They were delicious. Yeah, they they tasted good. They just uh, there's not much to them. Somebody suggested we do a painting of those carrots. I know. I probably need to. I, they're pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Document <laughs> our triumph. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so now I'm getting, now actually I'm going to switch to my script liner for this part. I'm going to get my two aught script liners, thin script liner, and I'm going to hold it back, far back again. And I'm going to go in for these areas that I'm seeing where I left kind of some dark happening. And just let that brush skip around in those areas. 
it's fluid paint, so you've got to have it thin or it just won't even flow off this brush. So uh, make sure you're adding lots of water to your paint, a little bit of glazing medium if you need to. Uh, if, if you're using water to thin your paints to get it to this consistency, if you don't have the fluid acrylics like I'm using that are already thinned, um, and just use a little bit of glazing medium, that'll help it stick. So, when are we planning to launch our gardening channel? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> I'm... I'm not an expert. <laughs> Obviously, that much is obvious by now, hopefully. But we're having fun. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are. All right, adding white here. Coming in with white. And you're thinning this paint with just water? This paint is already thinned, so... Oh, okay. Um, it's, like it's, a it's a fluid acrylic, so I'm not having to use rope. But if you were, that's what I was saying, you need to add a little bit of glazing medium or something to your paint um, if you're just using water only. Because it, it can underbind. Huh? I'm going to use some green here. Use yellow. Indian yellow and green. So here I don't have the fluid acrylic, so I'm going to have to use several scoopfuls of water to get it thinned out because those heavy body acrylics are really thick and then just grabbed a little bit of the glazy medium. So right down here at the bottom, it kind of has a lot of this green color in it. Okay, let me use some of the phthalo blue in here. You can see how I'm kind of using the flat side of the brush almost in some places. So I'll do it, I'll do it here down here. So if I lay the brush kind of flat, it's going to spread out a little bit and it'll give me these wider uneven lines. Okay. All right, so we're going to find this area that was the white and go right up in there and add this darker turquoise all in through here. Zigzag it, and then right in here, there's a dark turquoise section coming down. There we go. Dark there. Get some of this white here and add this. This is similar to that cobalt teal color that was already in there, so I'm just going to reinforce that going in and around this area here. We have both of these colors, kind of the lightened version and the darker turquoise, both. We just want to make sure that we're getting this rounded out. So since we've kind of cut this wave off a little bit and it's not so wide here, I'm going to go ahead and bring some of this around this way, even though it's not in our photograph. I think I can get away with that. That'll help kind of guide the eye coming around that curve there. Get 
some white here. So just skip in between colors here. A little bit of white, a little bit of the turquoise, a bit more white, a little bit of these other colors. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to this blue here, ultramarine blue. It's got a little bit of the white in it, but it's pretty dark. We have these lines up in here. So we've got these darker areas. So I'm going to focus in on those areas already. Dark and just add some of these squiggly lines to those areas. And you can add them over the white areas too. You don't have to stick to that, but so just kind of help reinforce what we've already got going on. more whitish. Got a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, the person says... It's really dark here. ...says that uh, their acrylic paints tend to dry very fast on the canvas, so what is the best way to fix that? Um, have, them, have them more wet before you go to canvas, so you probably don't have enough paint in your brush if you've got a dry brush and you're, what's happening is you've got a dry brush and wet paint. And when you put that dry brush onto that wet paint, it's going to soak all the moisture out of that paint. And so it's not, it's not going to be dry. So wet your brush and wet your paints more often and you'll, you'll get, they'll go on more smoothly, but it probably has to do with your brush. Probably most likely if your brush is too dry. Uh, okay, so far so good. Let's work on this area here. So I'm going to glaze a little bit more in here. Um, a little bit of this green. A little bit of turquoise, a little bit of thalo blue and turquoise, or thalo green and turquoise. And my glaze. So I've got this color that's light. I'm going to put this green glaze over it. Just change the color of that really dramatically. Look how pretty that is. I'm going to put it over some of my areas up in here, too. I can put it in over. I need to make sure that my paint's dry. But Oops, this is wet. I have to let that set. But I'm going to want to glaze over this a little bit too. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and put a little bit down here. And then I'm going to get some of that turquoise. Again, this is thalo blue, thalo green. Nothing special, just those two colors down in here. I'm gonna darken up that glaze. And right here in the middle, I'm going to get the thalo blue and my glaze. Hopefully I've got this light enough. I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of gotten dark. Okay, I'm going to have to probably...
I'll let that set. Let's go ahead and glaze over this with my ultramarine blue. Give it a second coat. Smooth out all that. Wipe my brush off. So this is what would happen if you, if you know, if you were trying to paint with the thicker. But no, no, this is not a good example because this brush is still too wet. <laughs> too wet. Never mind. But you pull you pull the paint off instead of adding the paint when you are trying to paint with a really dry brush. All right, so I'm going to get some white and some of this yellow. Just a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to tap it in along that front side of the beach and up in here. Pull it down a little bit. Going to that's light texture right there. One more time. Keep doing it, <laughs> painting over it. But okay. So this is that kind of yellow gold with the cadmium yellow light. I still have a little bit of blue in my brush. Let's so turn it a little slightly green, maybe. I'm just going to use the corner of my brush. I need to switch to some other brush here. I'm going to go ahead and use this angle brush. Get a little bit of the pink. Using the tip of the brush, squiggling just like I did up here in this part. And I'm going to go ahead and use some of this pink up in here too. Some of the yellow. This is kind of a glaze here, so I'm just kind of glazing with this turquoise color here. Cobalt 
peel and white. And this is more cobalt teal than white. It's the lighter version. Get some of the cobalt teal. This is where I was saying I was going to add more foam than is in our photograph, so I'm adding a little bit more foam in these areas here. So my paints are getting thick here. You can see how they're clumping up. So let me just add some water to this so it goes on smoothly for me. They glaze maybe a little bit of this thalo blue. Ooh, that's a lot of thalo blue. <laughs> Remember I said that tints from... <laughs> take my own advice there. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get some... This is cobalt teal and thalo blue with some white down. I'm just kind of softening up these areas just a little bit. Gonna get that dark ultramarine blue tip of the brush. Bring it all the way up to the corner. It's gonna point right down at this wave. There. And I'm kind of blending it in a little bit. Letting it merge with that green that was already on my brush. There we go. Get some more of this dark turquoise. Or dark, sorry, dark ultramarine blue. some waves in here. I'm gonna grab that turquoise and use it right in here. We've already kind of used it some so just you may not have to use it as much as I am. I am gonna grab a little bit of this burnt orange Mix it with it and put it in here because there is some of this browning color right in through there. 
not sure what it is. Let's go ahead and use it full strength in here. I'm going to use the cup. I need to clean this out. Burnt orange and magenta, necron, both. Remember, smaller, thinner back here. And then as we get closer here, they're going to get longer and darker, a little bit. Not dark. Yeah, darker and a little bit wider. And then just using the magenta kind of weaker strength. Get a little bit of white with it. Add some highlights in here. So my idea is just to transition between this dark into this light area here. So I need to have And this area really is all light, all basically all through here. This these values are real similar. So I need to lighten up these values in here. Get more white. There is a little bit of the darker colors poking through, but not a lot. You doing none? Still got anybody watching? No. Nobody watching? No, it's just you and me. I went to get dinner. Well, first of all, I forget forgot to hit start, so I didn't want to tell you. Uh, uh, <laughs> don't even joke about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be horrible. So just keep going. All is fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, I'm going to transition right here, bring this up into this wave. It's pink. I made it up with this light colors that I've got going on in here. That was a little thick right there, but. So the motion is, you know, this. So we're just trying to follow that line there. I'm going to get the blue and put it back over this because I kind of got too thick right here with it. So just kind of have some of that blue color. Go back and forth with this blue and this magenta color. The white right there until you get a good transition. And colors.
we're going to definitely be adding more of this white in here. So we're just going to putting the under layers on here. We're going to be adding more colors in here. But got to get the basics in there first, and then we can put the bright highlights on the top and finish it. Some of the purple and magenta, maybe just purple. Is it in here? For some of the shadow areas in here, kind of purple. So is there a substitute for the turquoise? Yeah, thalo blue and thalo green together can make the turquoise. It's just a, it's just a shortcut. It's just a color that I, there's a lot of the new uh, ground it would be faster just to grab it than to mix it. All right, getting my white and my yellow. I'm going to get this brush here. And for my white, I'm going to get some, I'm going to use my zinc white yet. So I'm going to use that. Zinc white and cadmium yellow and titanium white. So it's pretty much equal parts of titanium white and zinc white and then a little bit of the, little, little bit of the cadmium yellow. And I'm going to streak over this. If you can see where your sun is, then you're doing it. You've got too much too dark on your brush. So you should not be able to really see the top of the sun. Should just disappear into this. Ooh, too much. Maybe we can. Okay, there we go. I'll too much paint down there. I'm going to wipe that off. Try again. I accidentally put too much paint on there. And I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of this yellow glow up in my sky, too. To glaze it on. You can get a paper towel and just kind of wipe off the edges so that it blends in. I just want it kind of right in there. All right, and then I'm going to use this color in my water and really heavily thick this time. Find my light areas here. And a question. Okay. Uh, the person doesn't have any canvases. Okay. So is it possible to paint on just like normal copier paper? No. Okay. No. So what would be the minimum type of paper or something that they would need to have in order to? You can paint on wood. You can paint on cardboard. You could get a, you could get a, a 
cereal box and and uh, gesso it and paint on that. You could um, try to think what else. Wood, you know, wood, untreated wood. You know, you don't want anything that's got chemicals in it or anything. But um, something like that. A hard, harder surface is better. But the, the copier paper, just that acrylic's just going to eat right through it. It's not going to. It's going to tear the paper. It won't paint for you, and then you'll be frustrated. Okay. Go ahead and put this kind of at the top of some of these waves that I'm seeing coming up into the wave. And then a little bit in the wave. So let's get some bright white now. And I can switch my brush if I wanted to. I don't know if this one seems to be doing okay, so I'm just going to stick with it for now. Mm. Need some of that blue. I didn't do any blue in here. A lighter blue so you can see where you know, it looks funky and then all of a sudden it looks good <laughs> you know you just have to kind of lay these darker colors in they're going to look really weird at first so but you just kind of have to trust that it'll look better once you get these finishing layers on So quickly, we'll <coughs> let everybody know who might be new <laughs> that uh, traceables will be available over on Patreon. Yes. dot com and slash Angela Fine Art. Uh, we're doing this live, so if you're watching right now, we would recommend to wait till tomorrow. Yes. To join because today's the thirtieth of June, and uh, Patreon works on a calendar month, so. Still. It charges on the first of the month. Every right. Month. Right. So, no matter when you sign up. So, you would be charged today and then you'd be charged again 24 hours from now. Right. So, wait till tomorrow and sign up and uh, you can go over there, see all the different levels and all the different options that you have for all kinds of fun things to do. Traceable for this won't be available until tomorrow, anyways, probably. So, <laughs> true. Death. I usually do it from the finished painting. So, I haven't made it yet. Okay, just going through here and getting some white, bright white back in. I'm too close and going off camera. Thanks. Okay, getting that 
white and I'm gonna go along here and just add these little dabs of bright foam and light hitting foam. Keep these lines random. Holding it way far back on my brush so I can keep my lines from getting too rehearsed and just makes more na more natural looking lines I find. So real quick, we got the standard question. Difficulty level. I don't think this one's hard, uh, very hard. I really don't. Um, it's a lot of layers, so, you know, you just have to kind of trust the process and do it like I did, you know, just add little bits at a time, layer upon layer, until it starts looking good. But, you know, pay attention to the direction that you're painting it, you know, the lines. Uh, and, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's particularly difficult. So I would say uh, four. Maybe on a scale of 10, something like that. Okay, not a scale of four. <laughs> no, not four at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that white really adds a lot, doesn't it? It's really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to just add some of that white, bright white in through here. Again, little dots, dabs, some bigger sections, but I'm pretty close to being done here. I'm going to use the kind of more teal color to do the foam parts that are... Now, this is not in our photograph, but I'm going to go ahead and put in some extra foam that's not in our photograph. And they're, they're kind of doing these little connecting lights. Things so I'm just gonna kind of connect some lines here. Keep this angle, this dark right there. Get some cobalt teal here. Get some thala blue. with the cobalt heel there. Get that ultramarine blue. Did I miss anything? Sometimes I get in the middle of it and I don't see things until too late. <laughs> mm. Well, never too late, but you know, until the camera stops. I'm going to do this line that kind of connects up here. OK. 
kind of continue this line all the way up. This area is really bright. Three, so I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and add some light up here. Make sure I've got kind of some suds in my shoreline there, but this, this area should be so close in value that you're really not seeing a really strict line right there. I'm going to lighten up that that shoreline a little bit. It really doesn't need to be super dark right there. I do a little bit darker right in through here with the turquoise. A little bit of cobalt teal, but mostly turquoise. Okay, so nothing, you don't see anything? Uh, I think you got the water. Got the water down? I think you got the sky. Yeah. I think you got the tree line. Mm -hmm. You got the beach. Yep. You didn't really paint in the sea creature too well, but that's okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it looks it right. looks looks pretty good. Yeah, this is uh probably the well, I guess we could call it the second in a series. I don't know. There's another one of these that I was thinking about painting too. So if you like this and you want to see a third one, let me know. The other one's called Colorful Wave. We did it last summer, I think. So it's a companion piece to this one. Very similar style. Um. So if you want to check that out, you can search Angela Anderson Colorful Wave. It should pop up on my channel or just go to my channel homepage and look up the nautical playlist. It'll be in my nautical playlist of paintings. Probably one of the very first ones. I really like it. So that's why I did another one because I had so much fun with that first one. <laughs> Like, I saw it, I'm like, ah, that looks a lot like the one I already did. Uh, well, who says I can't paint another one like that? <laughs> this is my rules. <laughs> and thankfully, my uh, thankful art group who votes on the cooking paintings, they liked it too. So they gave it the thumbs up. And so I went ahead and, oops, I'm left in there a long time. Your art taking flight group. So, yeah, art taking flight. Yeah. Did I say thankful art? Yep. Sorry. Yeah, my art taking flight group votes on the upcoming stuff or potential images every month. So that was nice to have their input. Okay, so now that this is all kind of on here, I'm just going to kind of glaze with a little bit of this trimming blue. This will kind of tone everything down a little bit if I need it. Now, most of this I don't really want to do too much of this, but... You know, some of these areas, they look kind of like pretty stark, you know. So this kind of glazing can kind of help uh, the colors merge a little bit. That was right there.
kind of a back and forth with this kind of painting. And it's, it's kind of at this point, it's probably good to stop and just look at it from a distance, like go get a snack and then come back and look at it. And a lot of times you'll either see things you want to change or decide that it's done, you know, so. I'm going to get this really dark color and add that back in here. Let me glaze over some of these right back here. Just a little bit of that blue. Now be suspicious when you go get a snack after looking at me. <laughs> go get a snack. Take a look at it. Decide if there's it's, it's done or not. Right. <laughs> Needs, it seems to always need more work, though. <laughs> hmm. Hey, forty something years together, or no, not forty years together. Thirty something years together. Why did I say forty? Um, feels like no. <laughs> 30, uh, how many years? 33 this summer? No, 30. How many? What, 80, yeah, 32 married. Sad. Sorry. I'm in my art brain. I can't think of math right now. I got an excuse. All right. Let's see if there's anything else. I think I'm pretty close. Let me stop there. Sign it. And then a shorter liner to sign. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, it was. And you did what you promised. What? You showed us step by step from start to finish. I did. I mean, you didn't. Other than the parts where I didn't have you on camera, you pretty much showed them everything. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not your fault. That's more my fault. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> the zigzag lines through here. With this liner brush. Okay, so go up, go up about a quarter inch from the edge so that your signature can be seen if you frame it. Somebody was asking me about framing their artwork. You never want to put acrylics under glass, so find a frame that's got an open back. And we'll sign my name with two E's. And... And if you get it at a, a place like Hobby Lobby, they will actually do it for a very, very cheap. Like they'll give you a discount on the frame and then they'll, they only charge like three or four dollars to put a hanger on it and stuff, which you, you'll want. So um, I highly recommend doing something like that. That's what I usually do. It saves you the trouble. I do have the equipment and stuff. So, I, you know, if I, want to I can but I, I do like using their 
That is so Ridiculous. different than the advice I gave. What? The advice I gave was first you have to establish a motive and then place them at the scene. <laughs> And that's how you frame your paintings. <laughs> Could use a little bit of purple in here with these two dark brown blues. If you're new to the show, this is normal. I finish, I sign it, then I keep working on it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just using this dark, dark color for some extra squiggles here. So, the bad news is that we won't be here on Saturday. Yes. The good news is we won't be here on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Get bad news to who? <laughs> We do appreciate all the love and all the support and all the hundreds and thousands of regulars that come yeah. and join us each show, week after week, year after year. It's just it's amazing. It is amazing, and we don't take it for granted. Mm -mm. And we do appreciate your your uh, thoughts and understanding as we take a little break for ourselves. Like we've said, we've been doing this pretty much. Nonstop non for three years. For three years, yeah. <laughs> On Saturdays, at least. Right. Taking Tuesdays off as a break occasionally, but never Saturdays. So, well, unless we were on vacation or something for right. a week, but we were always right back, you know, the following week or so. We're filling in some of these, this, this flotsam, what is this? I don't know, with some dark areas. So, um, yeah, so it's just, it's going to be a nice little break. I don't know what I'm going to do with my son. <laughs> I was actually telling Mark, I think I'm going to. She was saying, they go, well, we could, you know, do some videos on this. I'm like, you want me to work on my day off that you just gave me? <laughs> what? I <laughs> know. I think I'm type A all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I was telling him I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe practice my watercolors. So she's gonna be gouaching. Yeah, gouaching the watercolors, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. And if, so, she, if she gouaches, you know, she when she gouached last time, she shared it on her uh, art taking flight. Yeah. Facebook group, and so there's some behind the scenes stuff there that happens sometimes. Yeah, I might uh, if I'm in the mood. You know, I might. Uh, just surprise the group with little mini videos. It won't be long ones, but what I'm working on if I'm working on something different on a Saturday. So who knows? But Mark's going Mark's gonna it's more of a break for him than it. <laughs> yes. I'd need the break too though. I do need the break. I because guess. outside of this I have a Monday through Friday. Exactly. Job. So it was a six day a week, sometimes seven day a week. Yeah. For me. And I know there's thousands and tens of thousands of people that do that also. So I mean, I'm not looking for pity. It's just going to be nice to have a little break so we can get caught up on some family stuff, mm -hmm. house stuff. Yes, for sure. For sure. All right. It's fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, Mark, like Mark said, we'll be back next Tuesday. Is it Tuesday night? I don't even know what night it is. Tuesday night, next Tuesday night. Uh, yeah. Your so. schedule is already posted for July and August. Oh, it is? Okay, good. You did, didn't you? Oh, I did, yes. So <laughs> 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 I did that. I was there when I did that. Um, sorry. <laughs> that was awesome. I meant, I meant, I thought you were saying Brennan had posted it on my social media. I'm not sure if he did yet. I but love you so much. It's, it's on my YouTube channel. I didn't know that. 
I'm not sure if Brennan has posted it on Instagram yet. So if he, he, he'll be posting it this week if not. So, and it'll also be coming out in my newsletter on Friday. So if you want to join my newsletter, you can go to my website. That's thankfulart.com and uh, sign up for the newsletter. And then you can get those. We send one out every Friday and it keeps you up to date on whatever we're working on. And you also get some free stuff every now and then. Yeah. All right. I'm done. We done? Yeah, I think so. This was fun. Right. I could keep messing with it, or, but it, I keep seeing things. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think we did it. So it's really fun. Hope you guys try it, and we'll see you next time. Bye.